Now, with Wolfram Alpha, we can start applying some derivatives to applications. What we want to keep in mind throughout all these applications is that derivatives always tell us about the rate of change of a function. Or, again, that's the same idea uh, as the slope of our function at a specific point. So, if we're dealing with a function c of x, let's say that's a cost function, then c prime of x, the derivative of that cost function, tells us how quickly our costs, c, are either increasing or decreasing. Or, to put that more simply, how quickly our costs are changing. If we're dealing with a function r of x, which is a revenue function, then r prime of x tells us about how quickly our revenue is changing. And if we're dealing with some function capital S of x, say that's a sales function, then s prime of x, just like the others, tells us how quickly our sales are changing. So the derivative function is going to tell us at what rate costs, revenue, sales, whatever it is we're looking at is changing. If our derivative is something greater than zero, when we evaluate it at a specific point, that means the function is increasing. If the derivative evaluated at some point ends up being something less than zero, then the function is decreasing. So that gives us information to understand that our costs are increasing or decreasing, revenue is increasing or decreasing, based off the result that we get from evaluating the derivative at a specific point. So in example four, we don't have a business application, a physics application, but this is common uh, applications for derivatives. We have an object dropped from a tower 144 feet above the ground. The object's height above the ground, x seconds after the fall, is given by this function, lowercase s of x. But how long does it take the object to hit the ground? What's the object's velocity at the moment of impact? So what we're given here, this function lowercase s of x, is a position function. So it's a function that tells us the position of our object, in this case height above the ground, after x seconds have passed. So if what we're interested in first is about how long does it take the object to hit the ground, what we want to do is solve when is our function s of x equal to zero. So solving that for x will give us the time x when our position is exactly zero or at ground level. So since we want to solve our position function equal to zero, we can ask Wolfram Alpha to solve 144 minus 16 x squared equal to zero. So we can just type in that exact expression that we want it to solve, press enter, click that equal sign. Again, check the input interpretation to make sure this matches what we expected. And we get a result of x equals plus or minus 3. So solving s of x equal to 0 gives us x equals plus or minus 3. So either after positive 3 seconds or negative 3 seconds, our, op our object hits the ground. A time of negative three seconds just doesn't really make any sense, so we can discard that solution and say that our object hits the ground after three seconds. So the second part of our question asks us, what's the object's velocity at the moment of impact? So what we need is a velocity function once we have this velocity function, we can evaluate it at three seconds to see exactly how fast our object was traveling. The velocity function is the same thing as the derivative of our position function. So we could plug this function into Wolfram Alpha, ask it to take the derivative. We've demonstrated a couple examples of that, but what you should be able to get is negative 32x. And again, this is our velocity function. So once we have the velocity function, then we can evaluate that velocity function at 3. 
So again, in Wolfram Alpha, you could ask it to evaluate negative 32x for x equals 3. This is the same thing as evaluating the derivative of our position function at 3. And this should give you a result of negative 96. So the object's velocity at the moment of impact is negative 96 feet per second. So rather than in these videos go back and forth between Wolfram Alpha and these different examples, I'll assume you, you worked through those first three examples. You know how to find the derivative and then evaluate the function for those different results. And so what we'll look at here are just the results that you should be getting. So in example five, the revenue in dollars from the sale of X car seats for infants is given by this revenue function R of X. What we want to do is find R prime of X. So again, we would use Wolfram Alpha, ask it to find the derivative of this expression, which should give you a result of 56 minus 0.04x. We would want to find the revenue and the instantaneous rate of change of revenue at a production level of 1,000 car seats. So that means we want the revenue function evaluated at 1,000, and we want to evaluate the derivative function at 1,000. So this first result gives us the revenue. And our second result, our prime, gives us the rate of change of our revenue. So first we would type in, excuse me, type in the original function, ask Wolfram Alpha to evaluate that at x equals 1,000. That should give us a result of 36,000. Then you would ask Wolfram Alpha to evaluate our derivative function at x equals 1,000. That should give you a result of 16. So this would mean that at a production level of 1,000 car seats, since x represents that production level, our revenue, which is given by the original function, would be $36,000. And since our derivative is positive, we know that revenue is increasing at a rate of $16 per seat, since that's the rate of change. So for every additional car seat that we produce, revenue is going to go up by an additional $16. We're already at a point where we're making a revenue of $36,000. So our purpose with these application problems will be to get these different results, but to know how to include all that information in a final interpretation expressing what those results mean.